3D printing is a form of additive manufacturing. So uh, traditional or subtractive manufacturing, you can think of as you have a big block of material and you shave away at it to create your part. Um, 3D printing builds the part from the ground up in a layer by layer process. And when you do that, you get a lot of advantages. Um, one of the biggest ones is you basically eliminate any constraints that you previously had on your design. So you can create parts that you could have never made with traditional manufacturing. And in doing that, you can actually now use AI to design the part. Um, so you get these parts that a human could have never imagined, um, that could have never been produced before, but you can today with 3D printing. So this is really disruptive for uh, the healthcare and aerospace markets. Um, any market where you have very complex, low volume parts. So for aerospace, um, you can often save weight in 3D printing and um, a very small percentage savings in weight, say if you reduce the weight of a part by 5%, you could save 20% uh, on fuel burn. So that makes a lot of difference to the, the margins of these aerospace companies. On the healthcare side, anything that's um, customized, um, basically you can scan a human body and, and print out an implant that's designed specifically for the patient. Previously, implants, um, you'd find whatever the closest fit was, you might actually have to shave away at the patient's bone to make it fit. Um, so you're getting shorter operating times and better patient outcomes with this technology. So I think that overall supply chains, I'd say for, for manufacturing businesses overall, um, supply chains will shorten. Um, I think that uh, in terms of uh, outsourcing, anything that's outsourced to, um, say, like a lower cost uh, environment today or a lower cost country in terms of labor, um, you actually might get that, um, uh, you, you might see those parts becoming uh, insourced and moving uh, yeah, back home if you're, say, in the US or, or here and you're outsourcing to China, for instance. Um, I think that overall, um, Automation, we've seen in a lot of cases, again, while it can displace jobs, it can also augment them. Um, so basically, uh, 3D printing, you can think of as a form of that. Um, it might replace sort of some um, lower skilled tasks um, and allow humans to sort of take the higher skilled jobs. So 3D printing today is about a $10 billion market. We think that could grow to $97 billion in the next five years. That's because um, we expect 3D printing today is mostly prototyping. That's about a $12 to $13 billion industry globally. The end use part, parts that go into the final product, is about a $500 billion opportunity. And we think it's only 1% penetrated today. Uh, so there's this massive greenfield space uh, opportunity for, for 3D printing. And we, th we still think it's pretty early days for the technology. Our top holding in the space is Stratasys. Um, they're the, a leader in 3D printing for plastic parts. Um, so they, uh, particularly in aerospace, they've made a lot of headway in, in printing and in using their technology for plastic and composite parts for aircraft. Um, some of the losers would be more the traditional manufacturing companies that choose not to adopt the technology. Um, so we don't think that necessarily injection molding or some of the old manufacturing processes will completely go away. But if you look at something like um, hearing aids, for instance, um, all hearing aids today are 3D printed. Um, and that took, I believe, less than two years for the entire industry to shift over because it made so much sense. Um, so I, I'd say any manufacturing company that doesn't adapt quick enough to this change uh, likely won't be able to stay cost competitive.